The grace and love of our Lord and Savior be with us always. Amen. The Word of God we want to consider today is the psalm reading for this past Sunday. It's from Psalm 78. I encourage you maybe to take a look at the entire psalm. It's 72 verses long, but we're going to look at oh, portions of the first seven verses of that psalm today where the psalm writer and man named Asaph said, O my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will utter things from of old, what we have heard and what our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel so the next generation would know them, and they in turn would tell their children. Then they would put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. My dear friends in Christ, there was a little girl who called out, Mommy, you know that vase in the china cabinet, the one that's been handed down from generation to generation? The mom replied, yes, I know the vase that you're talking about. And then the little girl said, well, mommy, I'm sorry, but this generation just dropped it. There are some earthly possessions that a person has that that are passed on from generation to generation, and, and there might be just huge sentimental value because they've been passed on from generation to generation like that. And it's tragic if something like that is broken or lost. But our reading for today talks about something that would be much more tragic it would be much more tragic for a new generation to drop it spiritually by not passing on the message of Jesus the Savior, the message of God's grace and love. Our psalm for this past Sunday, it talks about how important it is that that message, that it be passed on from generation to generation like that, that parents tell their children that it be passed on because all you need is one generation to not do that and then things can be lost. The message of God's salvation could be lost to future generations. And, and well, what our reading says is how important it is that that message be passed on from generation to generation. This psalm was written by Asaph. He was a Levite from that tribe in Israel. He was one of the men that was assigned by, by King David to be in charge of the music when the, after the Ark of the Covenant was taken to Jerusalem and the temp, tabernacle was set up there. Anyway, he had that job, and what he did is he often used history, Israelite history, to, oh, point out God's faithfulness and God's patience with his people and to warn the people not to rebel against God and to worship idols as their forefathers had done. Asaph said, O oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will utter things from of old, what we have heard and what our fathers have told us. I would imagine that most of you have heard that phrase that goes something like this. Those who don't know history are destined to repeat it. So what did Asaph talk about? He would have talked about all the things that God had done, like how he showed his almighty power by creating all things, how he sent the flood because of people's wickedness and 
unbelief and rebellion against God, how he chose Abraham to be the ancestor of God's special people, the God's special family. Oh, and how they ended up, descendants of Abraham, how they ended up going down to Egypt, their slavery there, how God delivered them from their slavery, freeing them from the Egyptian people, how God gave to them the Ten Commandments, all those laws and regulations that ruled their, their moral, their religious, and their government life. Well, how God took care of them miraculously while they were out in the wilderness. How they, how they entered into the promised land and how God gave them the victory over their enemies and how what God did is God made them into a strong nation up until the time of King David and a little later yet. All those things God had done for them. That's what Asaph could talk about. Unfortunately, he'd also have to tell them about how they rebelled against God and how God, remember, showing his love for them, disciplined them, and disciplined them so that they wouldn't continue to rebel against God and abandon God. And of course, what he could also do is talk about how God blessed them when they were faithful to God. But now, if you think about all of those things, what did that say to them? It said to them that what they want to do is not rebel against God because there's consequences, but that they'd want to be faithful to God and then that they could enjoy God's blessings. And that same thing is true for us today. If we're unfaithful to God, we can expect God to well, fortunately show his love for us by disciplining us to try to get us back to him. We can expect God to do that. And well, if we're faithful to God, well, then we can expect God to bless us and to strengthen our faith and to equip us so that we can handle living in this sinful world. But now, will we enjoy earthly material blessings when I'd say God will bless us? Well, yes, that's a possibility if it's God's will and if that's something that truly is going to be good for our eternal souls. Asaph said, we will not hide them from, our chil from their children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord. He decreed statutes for Jacob and established the law in Israel so the next generation would know them and they in turn would tell their children. Parents reading Bible stories to their children. Parents bringing their children to Sunday school so that they can, so that they can hear Bible truths, so they can hear about God's grace and love. These things are so important so that we and our children can learn from the past so that Maybe some of the bad things that happened in history that they wouldn't have to repeat themselves so that we could learn from their good examples instead of having to learn from their bad examples personally so that we can learn about God's grace and love and so that, well, we can see our sins and then also see our Savior and know that he's the solution to the problem of our sins and the way to eternal life. Asaph said, then they will put their trust in God and would not forget his deeds, but would keep his commands. When believers look at all of the things that God has and keeps on doing for them, when they think about his loving care, how he's always dealing with us in his grace and love. And, and especially when we think about how God gave us Jesus, how God gave us the solution to our sins, how he lived and died for us, paying for all of our sins and opening the door to heaven for us. Well, when we think about all of those things, when we reflect, reflect on all of those things that happened in the past, well, even in the past in our own lives, doesn't that 
motivate us to say, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for all you've done to help me. Please help me even though I'm a sinner and even though I, I will continue to sin and rebel against you. Please help me to always be faithful to you. And doesn't what God has done for us and keeps on doing for us, doesn't that motivate us to pass on to our children that precious heritage, that precious message, because we know how important it is for us. And it's no less important for them. And then also to, to pray that they would pass it on then to their children, and to their children, and to their children, Let's pray. Thank you for giving us your word and the history of your people and the world so that we can learn from their good and bad examples, so that we can learn and so that we can share your truths and your plan of salvation with others and especially with our, with our children. Help parents to always want to share Jesus with their children. Thank you for passing that message on down to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always.